Welcome to the Spot Doctor Podcast. I'm Dr. Trevor Cates. On today's podcast, we're discussing hormonal birth control's impact on your skin and overall health. Many women are put on birth control pills for managing symptoms like acne, irregular cycles, and perimenopausal symptoms. But did you know that this approach could actually be doing more harm than good? To talk about this today, my guest is Dr. Jolene Brighton. She's a naturopathic physician and nutritional biochemist with a focus on women's endocrine health. She's recognized as a leading expert in post-birth control syndrome and the long-term side effects associated with hormonal contraceptives. Dr. Brighton is author of Beyond the Pill, a 30-day plan to support women on birth control, help them transition off, and eliminate symptoms of post-birth control syndrome. She is a speaker, she's a speaker, women's health advocate, and medical advisor for one of the first data-driven apps to offer women personalized birth control recommendations. On today's podcast, Dr. Brighton explains how hormonal birth control works, the actually how it works so that you understand how it's impacting your physiology. Also, how it it may be impacting your health in ways you didn't even realize that you weren't aware. I want you to be educated on this because I think a lot of times people aren't understanding the impact when they start taking hormonal birth control. So I think it's important for you to understand this and how it may be playing a role in your health. And Dr. Brighton also explains alternatives for both birth control and symptom management. So for acne and solutions for acne, perimenopause, and other symptoms that women are often put on birth control pills for. So I hope you enjoy this information and that it is valuable for you or someone that you know you can share this with them. Please enjoy the interview. Jolene, it's so great to have you on my podcast. Welcome. Hey there. So grateful to be here and really excited to be chatting with you. It's evening for me right now. <laughs> I know you're in Paris, right? Yeah. Crazy, right? And uh, yeah, and you're sitting in Utah. So thanks for making this happen with the time zones. Yeah, absolutely. So we're talking about birth control pills and all the issues with this. And I think this is going to be a bit of a surprise for people because they, I think so many women are put on birth control pills not knowing the possible downside. And mm-hmm. they're not taught that before they're put on birth control pills. They're not aware of the various symptoms. So I'm so excited to have you on to talk about all of this. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, it's something that, you know, I like to say straight out the gate for women. Uh, I'm not anti-hormonal birth control. In fact, I used it for 10 years. It was part of my tool in becoming a doctor and a first generation college student. But there's a lot of things I wish my doctor would have told me before I popped that pill. Um, And then I would have just been able to take care of my body in such a better way than driving through the fast food, drive through windows and all the things that teenagers do. Um, So, you know, it's, it's, it's a topic that's near and dear to my heart, not only because of the patients that I work with, but because, you know, I did 10 years on the pill as well. Mm -hmm. And so how many women are currently on the pill and are they, you know, because it's not just for preventing pregnancy, right? So a lot of different reasons. Oh yeah. So, you know, if we're looking at the United States alone, it's about 11 million women are estimated to be on hormonal birth control, the pill specifically at this time. And when we expand that globally, we're looking at about a hundred million women. A hundred million women. That's a lot of women. And like you were saying, they're not all taking it for contraceptive reasons. In fact, when we look at some of the surveys that are done, it's estimated anywhere from 58 to 65%, as high as 65% of women are using hormonal birth control. The primary reason is for symptom management. And as you and I know, these symptoms have a root cause, but hormonal birth control has really evolved from being something to help us really control the reproductive system and when we wanna get pregnant, to now, you know, I call it like the pill for every female ill. Um, And so, yeah, I mean, we're looking at a lot of women worldwide who are using hormonal birth control primarily to control symptoms. Right. So when it comes to skin, a lot of women are put on birth control pills for acne, for example, Mm -hmm. uh, or they have PCOS, right? So what are, 
I mean, what are the, the, some of the other reasons why women might be put on birth control pill? Yeah. And I just want to say, I think that's one of the biggest disservices that we see in women's medicine is when you're past the pill for any kind of symptom without any conversation about what is going on. And it's just like you said, acne, that's something that women will be past birth control for. And as it turns out, they find out like decades later, they actually had polycystic ovarian syndrome, which we know is a metabolic disorder. So it's rooted in inflammation, blood sugar dysregulation, leads to diabetes and heart disease. And while your skin may be clear, like your other organs are suffering. So, you know, on top of acne, we've got, you know, the PCOS, as you mentioned, so irregular periods. Um, is, acne in irregular periods is why PCOS women often get put on hormonal birth control. But irregular periods can also be due to things like hypothyroidism. We also see endometriosis being a common reason, and not just endometriosis, but generally painful periods. So if you're having period pain, you're having heavy periods, and like I said, the irregular periods, anything that's termed a period problem, that's a reason to put a woman on hormonal birth control from the conventional perspective. And then we also see that a lot of women who are having hot flashes and you know they're starting to have night sweats, so they're having perimenopausal symptoms can also be passed hormonal birth control as a solution for that, which is very short-sighted and certainly not, not the ideal therapy um, for those kinds of symptoms. All right. So let's talk backwards and away from, from this. And cause you said that you're not opposed to hormonal birth control. So mm -hmm. do you think it's okay or a good idea. Yeah. So, well, I first will say this, the only person who can decide the best form of contraceptives is you. And so it's not my job to be like, oh, I think you should or shouldn't take hormonal birth control. It's really my job as a doctor to educate you and inform you. So at the end of the day, you feel you made the best decision for yourself. And whatever that decision is, that I support you in that decision. So if you want to use hormonal birth control to not get pregnant, then I'm going to support you in that decision. If you are a woman with endometriosis, you know, you're in crippling pain. I mean, Women with endometriosis, sometimes they're in pain for 10 days or more out of the month. They, you know, what, is, what does it take to heal the body naturally? We've got to eat well, we've got to exercise, like we've all heard these things, but when you're in debilitating pain for almost half of the month, that can be near impossible to do. Or women who have extremely heavy periods where it's getting to the point where they can't rebuild re, uh, those iron stores fast enough to keep up with the amount of blood. Sometimes you need to come in. That blood loss is just too much. You need to come in and stop the period for a period of time, period for a period of time, but you need to stop her from menstruating so that she can rebuild those iron stores. Because if you get anemic, your periods get heavier and then you get more anemic and it just keeps going in that loop. And then, you know, there's other situations where sometimes women, <clears throat> excuse me, I have a little tickle there. They will choose that like, I'm getting married and I don't want to have to deal with menstrual cramps or PMS or bleeding through my wedding dress being a threat. And they want to use birth control temporarily. Um, and then there's the IVF route where you're, some women are going through IVF. They need, that's, that's a necessary tool to use that hormonal birth control so that they can get that cycle right so their IVF is successful. And so I think there's, I mean, as I you know, stated here, there's a lot of reasons to consider using hormonal birth control. But if we're going to use it, we need to know what those side effects are, how to stay safe when we're on it. And I would say that, you know, as I said before, I don't think that hot flashes are a good reason to be using hormonal birth control. And like, it's your choice if you want to use hormonal birth control for symptom management, more power to you. That's 100% your choice. But if you're using it because your doctor is giving you no other options, that's where I take issue because you should be able to know why your body is presenting with those symptoms, what is the root cause, what to do about it, and make the decision for yourself rather than being told the only option you have is something like the pill. Right. And I think it's, you make such a great point that you know, these, these medications that we have out there, like the birth control pill, they can be a good tool. And, and, but the problem is that oftentimes we're too quick. Doctors are too quick to use that instead of, okay, what's really going on with this person? Uh, what are the, what's going on? Are there other ways that we can help address that and educating patients, educating people on the different options and mm -hmm. what it will take. We well, go, yes, you could do this, everything from here to here. What, what, what are your, 
what are you comfortable with? What can you do right now? Or maybe there are different, different phases, like we, we need to start here, but then eventually get you off the birth control pill and support your body during the process. So um, I think that's one of the things that's great about naturopathic medicine or naturopathic doctors is that we talk about the root causes and we really look to find those and support the, the patient and realize that sometimes medications, I mean, and I see that with skin issues, sometimes people's skin is so inflamed that it's, it's important to get it calmed down first and using medications can be a good place to kind of help support people during that. But, mm -hmm. but the goal is to really to get to that root cause, right? So, I mean, and that's how I feel that using birth control pills for acne typically does, is not a great approach because you're no, not- No, it's really not. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I mean, and to your point, like that is why my book is called Beyond the Pill is because you know, like I know, like every woman knows she can always go to the doctor and get put on hormonal birth control to manage her symptoms. But let's go beyond that. Like, let's go deeper than that. Let's see what other solutions are out there so that you really do feel like you've made the best decision given the best information that you could have. Now with acne, you know, the, the thing that's so, is such a bummer about acne is that with some women on hormonal birth control, it can get worse. But there's others that it does get better. But then it comes back with a vengeance when they stop. And for some women, they never even had acne and they come off of um, hormonal birth control to find they have new onset acne. That happened to me. I never had cystic acne in my life. 10 years on the pill, I come off. Suddenly, I have a jawline full of cystic acne. And I was like, what, what just happened here? I have no idea. And so I give solutions about acne. I give lots of solutions in my book, but acne is a big one because it's what kind of makes us addicted to hormonal birth control. Like I certainly went through, I was like, maybe I should just go back on it. Like maybe I should, maybe that's it. And I have patients who come to me and they're like, you know, it was so bad. I went back on the pill, tried to come off again. Same thing happened. Now I'm terrified. And I don't want any woman to feel afraid of being on hormonal birth control, be afraid of coming off of it. And so I provide all of these solutions in my book, but we've got to first understand why. Now, well, as long as you're on hormonal birth control, it's doing several things in your body, one of which is depleting nutrients like zinc, which is super important in skin health and immune system regulation, plus antioxidants, which is what keeps our skin looking youthful. And, um, you know, you, I mean, you've got an entire uh, product line that helps with that as well. And it's something that I've had patients absolutely say to me, you know, I feel like being on the pill once I started that, I feel like they started aging a little more quickly. I'm like, well, it's depleting a lot of nutrients that your skin needs to be healthy and your body will always choose vital organs first, skin second. And as much as acne sucks, because it really, really does, um, you're not going to die from acne. So your body's like, oh, okay. <laughs> like that's where we can put things. So we've got the nutrient depletions. That's one piece of it. Now, the other piece is that Birth control, while it's depleting nutrients that impede liver detoxification, it's also causing burden on your liver. Um, your liver is responsible for detoxing all those hormones out, and you're taking enough hormones to shut down brain and ovarian communication. So it's not like you're rubbing a little bit of hormone cream on your wrist. No, this is enough oral medication to be able to pass through your liver and still shut down the way your brain and your ovaries communicate. So we've seen studies, there's lots of studies on how hormonal birth control can actually cause genetic changes to your liver, but also structural changes. And your liver is responsible for detox. And if it cannot detox and move thing, get things packaged up to move out of the gut, you're going to find you start having skin symptoms. And acne is definitely one of those ways. But you know, you can also have things like eczema. You can have just strange rashes as well, where it's like, I mean, I've seen this with women where they come off of hormonal birth control and they're like, my dermatologist has no idea what's going on. Like now I have these strange rashes. And it, it's really, you know, comes down to nutrient depletions, liver health, and then we've got what's going on in the gut. So birth control researchers have said birth control, what it does to your microbiome is similar to what antibiotics do. We know antibiotics, they pretty much decimate the microbiome. They lower diversity. And so, and I, I don't know about you, but I don't know anybody who takes you know, antibiotics for decades on end. Um, that's not a common thing. And so if your gut is seeing the diminished amount of healthy microbes, um, hormonal birth control also leads to intestinal hyperpermeability or leaky gut. 
Now we've got an inflammatory state going on. Like that's a perfect recipe for skin issues. And then when you come off, there's this thing called the androgen rebound that I talk about in my book, which is where basically the ovaries are like, finally, we can do our thing. And then they'll overshoot the male sex hormones. We have them too. Just men have them a lot higher. And that can cause the oily skin. Now we're getting acne. We're losing hair on our head and getting in our chin, chest, and abdomen. Like nobody likes that. And then you go to your doctor and they say, the solution is to go back on the pill. Only I've had patients where they come off, they have this androgen rebound, acne comes up, then they get back on the pill and things just keep getting worse and worse and worse. And that comes down to, you know, what I've seen, it's all about the liver and the gut. Again, liver has to package up those hormones to move them out. Then you have to poop them out. And those bacteria have to help in that. So if that system's not working right, you're sure enough going to have skin symptoms. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So then it creates all these hormone imbalances when you go off. Um, but even when people are on, Mm -hmm. there, there can be issues. I mean, I know actually, I remember when I was, when I was like 20, I took birth control pills that made me break out when I went on them and I had my, my face was completely covered in acne mm -hmm. and I didn't know, I didn't know it was acne because I'd never um, seen anything like that before. And I never, no, nobody mentioned, you know, that this might be a side effect. Right. So I go in to see a dermatologist and they're like, Oh, I think maybe you have poison oak on your face. Like, did you expose? <laughs> like, they yeah. Didn't know what was wrong with me? It was that bad. And then, um, eventually they figured out that it was the birth control pill I was on and I went off it and it, then it went away. But I, I did mm -hmm. have to take, uh, some steroids to get it to go away. Cause it was, I was just a mess, but, yeah. um, I, I don't even remember what birth control pill it was. Oh man. If we would have known what we know now back then, yeah. like I went on a birth control pill that had me, like I was just so depressed and incapacitated. And I, and then I switched pills and my mood completely shifted. And I so wish I knew what that pill was. I'm like, <laughs> I wish I would have wrote it down and I knew which one it was and like could have documented that. Yeah, but there are a class of uh, birth control pills that are d do tend to make people break out in acne more, you know, more than others. So mm -hmm. there's that. But um, but there's also so in addition to acne, one of the other big things like you mentioned was that women being put on birth control pills around you know perimenopause. So yeah. I'd love to talk some more about that because why? So can you explain why people are put on it? how that works, works. I'm going to put that in air quotes. Um, and then, you know, what it's actually doing in, in a harmful way. Yeah. So, you know, what happens in perimenopause is the ovaries begin their decline as they should. Um, we'll start to have irregular periods. And that can be one reason why a doctor will say, well, you're having irregular periods. Hormonal birth control will regulate your period. Once you get your period, if you, it's ever irregular, this is the story you will be told. It's really important to understand that the period that you get on hormonal birth control is a withdrawal bleed. So it's a medication-induced bleed. It's not actually a period because you've shut down ovulation because that's how birth control works. Now, the other thing too is that doctors will say, well, you know, when it comes to being in perimenopause, like you may or may not ovulate, like it's kind of a moving target. So you're at higher risk of getting pregnant, especially if you have these irregular cycles, which is true. And then, you know, a woman says, I have hot flashes. I'm having night sweats, I'm feeling moody, I'm having weight gain. By the way, birth control is not going to help your weight gain um, in perimenopause or menopause. Um, and so a doctor will offer that up of like, here, this is what I use for my 20 year olds, this will work for you. Hormonal birth control was designed to be used in a healthy female. And we have come to understand that after age 35, the risk for like stroke and heart attack rise. And so if you're putting a woman at 48 on a hormonal birth control, that's putting her at really high risk uh, for these side effects, which you know are, are thought to be you know, minimal risk in a younger population. So you know, with that in mind, we also have to view through the lens that a study came out in 2018 showing if you've been on hormonal birth control for just six months in your life, you have an over 30% increased risk of developing diabetes as you go into menopause. So hold up, like six months of my life and I can develop diabetes later. And then you want to put a woman so close to menopause 
on hormonal birth control, knowing that it induces insulin resistance and blood sugar dysregulation. Now, the best thing that you can do, so if you want to use bioidentical hormones, like I, you know, this is something I support patients with. They are not the same as synthetic hormonal contraceptives. So let's just be really clear about that. Like the, the dose that you need, and especially with, when we're using topical estrogen that's much safer, the dose you need to get symptom relief to protect your bones, your brain, your heart is much lower than the dose you need to shut down your brain from talking to your ovaries. So one, it's a very short-sighted solution because we're just talking about synthetic estrogen and then progestin, which doesn't have the benefits of progesterone. And it's that decline in progesterone from lack of ovulation that causes all of those side effects um, in perimenopause. And you know, rosacea is something that comes up during this time. It can actually be made worse by hormonal birth control. And you can get melasma too developing, which for people listening, melasma is hyperpigmentation of the skin. So it's where your skin gets dark. And we always think pregnancy, it's well-documented hormonal birth control causes this as well, which is like a super bummer because now, you know, as I talked about, it depletes antioxidants, which is, you know, fighting free radicals in the aging process. You can develop hyperpigmentation. And because of that synthetic estrogen not having the same effect as your natural estrogen, you can get thinning of the skin. And we see this, like the place where it shows up where women start talking about this the most, is the vagina. And the, the labia and the introitus, so the opening of the vagina, it atrophies. Women start having pain with intercourse. It can become friable, which means it tears easily. You can have pain with orgasms. So you might lose your libido on hormonal birth control, then you're having pain with sex, and then even if you do achieve an orgasm, it's painful. Like, that's just, that's lame. That's not okay. Um, but with all of that, a woman that's in perimenopause, like, she needs natural-based progesterone. She needs, um, you know, if she's going to use estrogen using a topical bioidentical estrogen, she likely needs testosterone, which this is why I said hormonal birth control is not going to help with that weight loss because it actually gobbles up all your testosterone. Now we get muscle cells that are atrophying. So that can lead to urinary incontinence, can also lead to osteoporosis because you don't have substantial muscle mass and you're going to gain weight because that muscle is starting, it's very metabolically active. So it's starting to decline and you can get, you know, what develops later in our older population, sarcopenic obesity, where now you've got fat cells depleting or coming in and you're deleting your muscle cells. So we start to see that shift, but even more concerning, you delete those muscle cells. You, we know that there's actually like, there was a study shown that um, the, the meatier your thighs, ladies, the, the less chance of dementia, like because of your mitochondria. And what do your mitochondria need? Antioxidants, like CoQ10, that hormonal birth control is depleting. So, you know, women in that phase of life, it's in all phases of life, it's much more complex. But when it comes to those symptoms, it's much more complex. And I'm sure that you've seen this. If estrogen declines or you're using a medication that messes with your adrenals and your ability to make DHEA, we're going to see hair changes, skin changes, uh, changes to your nails as well. And so using synthetic birth control is actually, you know, keeping women from getting those natural estrogens during that period of time they would be exposed to. And it can cause those unfavorable tissue changes throughout the body. Um, does that all make sense? I know I just talked for a bit you there. You just went through a lot of information. So <laughs> I, I, I love that because I think I hear this in my practice so often that I have somebody come in and they say, oh, I was... Um, my doctor suggested I, I um, going through perimenopause, so they suggested hormones, so they put me on birth control pills. So mm -hmm. it's like doctors, a lot of conventional doctors think of and communicate, or at least that's what my patients are telling me, that 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 the other doctors are saying, oh, you need bioidentical hormones, or not even bioidentical, you need hormones, you need hormone therapy, let me put you on birth control pills. And mm -hmm. so I think that, I, you know, there's a lot of talk that women are talking about, oh, I'm getting going through perimenopause, so that means I need hormones. And that to them equates to the birth control pill. So mm -hmm. I'm glad that we're clearing this up, that there it's, and, and what you're talking about, about how different the birth control pill is versus bioidentical hormones. So just to kind of back up a little bit, what exactly is the birth control pill? Yeah, so it's a synth so there's two. One is the combination pill, which is a synthetic estrogen with progestin, 
So there's only one progesterone and your ovaries make it. Progestin is made in a lab. Now there's the other pill, which is the mini pill, and that's progestin only. It has a really high failure rate. So it's really rare that a woman is given that. Um, it's usually only postpartum that we do that because a woman is such high stroke risk postpartum that you don't want to give her the estrogen. So with that, <clears throat> excuse me, the synthetic progestins, what's important, and I want to just speak to this because you know, what you said is that doctors don't really understand. So they're all trained in you know, using hormonal contraceptives. And then it's like a woman's in a different phase of her life cycle and they're like, hormones, it's just all the same, right? But most doctors and researchers don't understand the difference between progesterone and progestin. And the reason why I say this is because almost, I mean, almost every study that I found that they'll say progesterone is bad and progesterone can do these things, you get into what they actually used and it's progestin. Yet the researchers were using progesterone and progestin interchangeably. I hear this from doctors all the time as well, where I mean, I'll have doctors sometimes who are like, well, I tested her progesterone and it's not showing up. And I'm like, well, she's on progestin. Like that, you can't, you can't test that. Like this is something that's not the same thing. Um, and so, you know, if you're a woman listening to this and you felt confused about this, know that like a lot of people in medicine and research are confused about this. And, you know, just to give a few comparisons is like progesterone will help you feel chilled out and calm by stimulating the GABA receptor in your brain. So when you're feeling like, why am I having anxiety coming out of nowhere? And I'm having these racing thoughts at night and I never was an anxious person. That could be your progesterone. Uh, progestin doesn't have those same effects. It doesn't have those same benefits. Progesterone is a diuretic. So it's going to help with water weight. Progestin doesn't have the same effect. This is partly why women will get on hormonal birth control and notice right away they gain weight. They're just like, in like a week, I gain all this weight. That's usually water weight coming on because progesterone has the diuretic effect. You know, progesterone helps us maintain a pregnancy. Progestin has never been shown to do that. Like there's a lot of things going on here where it's like, they're not the same. And structurally, when you look at them, they're not the same at all. Yeah, and I think it's so interesting when you were talking about how many women are put on birth control pill for for regulating cycles and for perimenopause, and yet there are so many doctors out there saying that um, hormone therapy is not safe, biogenical hormones aren't safe, and there's so much controversy out there and misunderstanding, misconfusion. So I'm I'm happy to have you on today to clear up some of this, specifically around birth control pills and. I love that your book is about beyond the pill. Like what else can we do besides the pill? So let's talk more about that too. So what else can people do that are struggling with, with some of these issues? I mean, I, you know, I talk a lot about, but about acne, but you know, like perimenopause, do you talk about these kinds of things in your book or what, you know, what are we doing beyond, beyond the pill? Yeah. So I want to say like, I think your book is an excellent resource when it comes to skin and like what you can do with your skin overall. And I do, I, you know, in my book, I go through a whole protocol. So what is the secret sauce? Like if you want to have awesome hormones at any phase in your life, but you best have this dialed in if you want to have a successful, and when I say, say successful transition into menopause is that you're not that like what you see in the movies kind of scene going on. And that is you got to take care of your gut take care of your liver, balance your blood sugar, and make sure your adrenals and thyroid are on point. Because once the ovaries quit, it's up to the adrenals to make DHEA that is going to then be your estrogen and your testosterone. So with that, in Beyond the Pill, I have an entire chapter on liver health, which, you know, my, um, you, you read a book, so you know how this goes um, with publishers. My editors were like, that why are you talking about liver and then you're talking about gut? Like what people just want the sex hormones as solutions. And I'm like, yeah, but like, I don't want them to have to keep treating the same stuff over and over. So if we can take care of your liver, then, and then we take care of your gut, like that's the foundation of like hormones right there. And then there's an entire chapter about adrenal and thyroid health as well, because we have to have all of those in place. You know, sometimes things like hot flashes, it's not about estrogen. It's about cortisol and epinephrine, norepinephrine misfiring from the adrenal glands. And so that's something there, you know, shifting your adrenal glands. It actually, if you take care of your adrenals and your thyroid, it's going to be so much easier for your estrogen and for your progesterone and testosterone to be in balance. And at the same time, if you are, your liver's working right to detox that estrogen and for your body to be able to move it out, 
less likely to have hot flashes, less likely to have night sweats. And so I go through that in detail in my book. I give you a bunch of recipes. So I'm like, okay, here's all the foods that are going to help you. And like, here's a ton of recipes for that. And I'm very much like, if you're going to present a problem, so I'm the kind of person that like, when I read a health book and it's like, here's a problem, but the solution comes a hundred pages later. I kind of get a little bit anxious where I'm like, I need to know what's happening right now. And so when you get into beyond the pill, there's actually right away in the first chapter, a quiz. So you can figure out what your hormone imbalance is from that quiz. It's like, Hey, if this is what is true for you, this is what you figured out, jump to this page. Like you need to read this chapter and then jump to these pages. This is exactly where your solutions are so that you don't, cause like, look, if your hormones are imbalanced, like you don't have time to read a book from front to back. And I went through this with my publishers too, where they were like, well, we want people to read the whole thing. I'm like, they're not going to read the whole thing. I wouldn't read the whole thing. Like I'm not designing it that way. Like it is a manual for you to figure out things. And so you can read it front to back. It does work that way as well, but you can also just get right to the point of solutions. And then when I start talking about things like irregular periods or heavy periods, not heavy Periods can be really common in perimenopause, and that's something doctors will be like, ah, take the pill. You need to know why that's happening because whatever's happening then, like it's still going to be there five years from now if you don't address it. It might be fibroids. You might be finding yourself with a hysterectomy later because no one addressed what was going on. And so I have these, I have an entire chapter where it's like, here's what's going on with your hormones. Okay. Here's, here's what your doctor should be investigating. What might be going on? Here's the lab testing they should do. And here's what you should do right now. So that while you wait for that doctor's visit or wait for the lab results, you can start working on those things. Because as you and I know, natural therapies take time. So let's not waste any time. Let's start those interventions now and then work on the root cause. And in the book, it's like, whatever you start to work on now. So for heavy periods, for example, starting to increase in sources of iron and making sure that you're getting lots of iron and then bringing in foods that help detoxify estrogen, that's only going to help you. You're only going to get healthier from that. Like that's the major side effect there with that is that you're going to get healthier. And then if it you know, turns out that it's like, yeah, it is iron deficiency anemia, you can bring in an iron supplement and start rebuilding those stores. And so I address a whole lot um, in this book. And so, you know, I really wrote it. So it's like, you, there's solutions beyond the pill. There's also life after the pill. So I want you to know that like, if you did struggle with acne, there is life beyond the pill and there's an entire protocol set up in there. So you can be as successful as possible. I've helped a lot of women. I mean, I have clear skin now, I'm like lifting my chin. So you can, for the people on the video to see it is I always hate when you're like, wait, did, did they actually clear their skin? Like what's going on there? You've been on YouTube, you know what I'm talking about. Um, but you know, with that, you know, you can absolutely get you know amazing skin. You can normalize your periods. You can get your energy back. If hormonal birth control is part of why your adrenals and your thyroid have been struggling, I'm going to help you figure that out so you can be more energized. And there's an entire chapter dedicated to mood, so you don't have to be anxious. You don't have to be moody. You don't have to feel depressed or wonder why and what's going on with you. And then my, one of my favorite chapters is the one all about libido and fertility. And I will say, and I say that and fertility because women will say, wait, but I'm using the pill because I don't want to get pregnant. I'm coming off like, why are you trying to make me fertile? And like, because for as however long that you are in your fertile window, you want to be fertile because that's how you get your progesterone up, which makes you feel chilled out and calm helps with weight, helps with skin, you know, helps with all of these things that like honestly drive us all to want to get on hormonal birth control uh, some days. So, um, and in that chapter, it's just fun because I prescribe orgasms. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Um, so, so for those of us that, ha which is a lot of women obviously have been on birth control pills at some point in our life. There are recommendations for, for getting ourselves back on track. So are there any general recommendations that you can share with us today about getting, you know, kind of reversing what damage may be there? And maybe people aren't even having symptoms after taking birth control pill, but, but maybe they're kind of deficient in things or what, what are some things that people can do to kind of build themselves back up after taking birth control pills? Yeah. And you know, that's the thing that we see often is that <clears throat> some women will come off and they're like, mm, it's okay. There's maybe some mild symptoms. And then, you know, months later, sometimes years later, they're like, 
and now I can't handle those. Now they creeped on to me. And so, well, you know, you might be someone who's transitioning off or you come off and you're like, ah, I can live with this. Can you live with it if it's like amplified by like 10 in the next couple of years? Because if you don't address what's going on, things are going to be left to brew. So number one, replenish those nutrient stores. So get yourself on a good multivitamin or a good prenatal, depending on where you're at in your life cycle. Really build up those nutrient stores. You, if you're on hormonal birth control, you just know diet and lifestyle are always foundational, but you cannot just out diet hormonal birth control. You'll have to have a supplement on top of that, especially if you've just come off of it and you're starting to have symptoms, bringing on a quality multivitamin or prenatal, but you've got to get the diet dialed in as well, which means, and it's not the sexy stuff. I'm going to say that like, it's, it's the stuff you've heard so many times, but lots of leafy green vegetables, high quality proteins, high quality fats. Yes. You need to eat the cholesterol. I will teach you um, all in my book. The chapter is called The Lowdown on Your Hormones, how you actually build hormones, how your hormones work in your body, and you've got to eat fat for those. Anti-inflammatory fats, I'm going to say that because we don't want the skin flaring. Um, and you've got to also be starting to look at things like your lifestyle and you know what is going on with your stress. And so right now, let's get those nutrient stores up. So start shifting the diet to include more vegetables can be a really easy thing that you do, especially cruciferous vegetables with help with liver detoxification. Get yourself that quality multivitamin going, and then consider doing some repair to your gut. That's going to vary for each person, but you know, bringing in nutritive foods like bone broth, starting to take a probiotic, eating probiotic-rich foods can really help so that you start detoxifying those hormones. And we know, uh, you know, you're the one who always is like, the, I think your saying goes like, your skin is a mirror of the inside of your body. Am I saying your quote right? Yeah, a magic bear. Mm -hmm. Got it. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, with that, if your gut is healthy and a lot more functional, your skin is going to look a lot better as well. Um, and then, you know, the other thing is that if your symptoms are kind of extreme, you want to consider doing like a two week liver detox. Like, where, and when I say liver detox, that's nothing extreme. You're not going to like drink swamp water. That's not what we're talking about here. <laughs> Some of that stuff tastes like swamp water. Um, but, you know, more of, um, making sure that you're really uh, upregulating the liver detoxification pathways by getting the foods that your liver needs to function. So drinking things like dandelion root tea, getting in like burdock root into the diet. Again, the cruciferous vegetables can help. You'll need those high quality proteins. You can't detox without amino acids. And you know, most women are going to benefit from using some physician grade supplements on top of that. I mean, that's you do all the diet stuff, you put the supplements on top of that detox. And that's when women are like, my skin has never looked better by the end of that. <laughs> so that's why I want to add that in there. Because if you're like, I'm eating all that way, uh, you know, I'm doing all those things, things are not getting better. Definitely consider adding the supplements on, on top of that. And then don't forget to sleep. Because yes, if you don't sleep, you are going to age a lot more rapidly because you don't get all those yummy hormones repairing your skin at night. But there's also the fact that we now understand, well, Chinese medicine always knew this, but then we had a research study come out. So now we really know this, that you know your organs are in a circadian rhythm. And we know now that if you're not sleeping optimally, that your liver won't detox appropriately. And it, it took a big hit for however long you were on hormonal birth control. So say thank you to your liver. It's over here on your upper right-hand side. That's why I'm saying thank you right now, but say thank you to your liver because it does so much for you. And it did so much to keep you safe. So you didn't get overwhelmed and overburdened with that hormonal birth control. Yeah. So with all this talk, thank you. That's fantastic. Um, I, I love all those tips. And of course, you know, a lot of that stuff is, is you know, things that I talk about in my book and there are things mm -hmm. that support the body overall. Um, and, and so those are, you know, it all lines up, right? Um, so as people are listening, watching to this, I think there, if there's anybody that's on birth control pill, which I'm sure there people are, they're going to be immediately going, I'm going to get off my birth control pill. So don't do that. <laughs> yeah, right. so I wanted to give you a few moments to talk about if you're on birth control pills right now, if somebody is, so what, what should they do if they want to get off? Yeah. So, well, the first thing is, and you will read this uh, in my book where I really prepare you and like, we're like, we're going to weigh the pros and cons here. If you got on it for symptom management of any kind, you're going to need to give yourself a good three months, maybe more to prep your body before you come off this because we want you to be successful and I don't want you to be in hormonal hell. And I don't want you to look like, 
you know, you're 14 and you're in your 30s or 40s. And that is, you know, it's something that I'll say, I've noticed that the younger a woman is um, put on hormonal birth control, the worse, like the almost puberty that comes back after coming off of it. Um, and I say that because there's part of me that's like, is puberty actually necessary? Like, is that a necessary thing for us to all go through <laughs> that the body goes through it again? And so if you were put on it, so let's say you were put on it, like, you know, at 14, 15, 16, give yourself three months of really prepping your body and then come off and you'll find a whole protocol and be on the pill. And then we'll go into like individualizing that for you. It doesn't mean you need to do a super restrictive diet for three months. It doesn't mean that you have to be taking like boatloads of supplements for three months. You're going to have to do some work to prepare your body and then dial it in as you transition off. And you're going to have to track your symptoms so that you know what works for you and what doesn't work for you. <clears throat> now, the other thing is, you do not want to get pregnant after hormonal birth control immediately. And even if you're coming off of it and you're like, yeah, I want to get pregnant. That's why I'm coming off. You need to prep your body for at least six months. There's tons of research to support this. And just in everything I've said that you've been listening to so far, that's a more than enough reason to do this. So you've got to have a backup method. Before you come off of hormonal birth control, make sure you have a backup method. That really is step one, because even if you do want to have a baby, it's just not time yet, okay? There's some work you got to do on your body so that you're as healthy as possible, baby's as healthy as possible, and then you have a healthy postpartum. And then just because your doctor put you on the pill and you were like, well, I'm in perimenopause and I haven't seen my period. Doesn't mean you can't get pregnant because ovulation comes before menstruation. And I cannot tell you how many women that I've had come into my clinic and they're, I'm like, what's your contraceptive that you're using? And they're like, I'm not using anything. I'm like, okay, well, a side effect of getting healthy is not like your body will be more fertile. No, no, no. My periods have been so irregular. I'm about to end that 48 and pregnant. And I was like, Mm, I've, I've had 50 year olds pregnant and I'm like, that, that's supposed to not happen. And I'm sorry that happened, but like, remember we talked about this thing. So that's why I have this fear at night that sometimes keeps me up where I'm like, there's, if women just hear these things and they jump off birth control and then there's this generation of Brighton babies where everybody had all these unintended pregnancies and then history is going to look back and be like, that curly haired girl, like, look what she did. <laughs> so, um, and I will say, because so you know, fertility definitely improves with a healthy body. Oh, yeah. And I've heard that so many times that you're saying, oh, I just can't get pregnant. I can't get pregnant. I, you know, it's just not even possible. And then they get healthy and boom, they get pregnant. And sometimes it's a blessing. Sometimes it's a oops, mm -hmm. <laughs> but, but be prepared like what you're saying. So yeah, definitely want to reiterate that. Yeah, totally. And I'll say right now, you know, if you go to beyondthepillbook.com, so when you grab the book, I got a bunch of bonuses for you. And one bonus is a recipe guide. So there's a bunch of recipes there for you. The other one is nutrient depletions created by hormonal birth control and how to use food to help start replenishing those nutrient depletions. So that is really like one of the step ones. And there's also a lab guide in there as well. So if you want to start getting testing going with your doctor, that can really help guide you in that as well. Well, yeah, that's great. I mean, B vitamins are another one that's that get depleted from birth control mm -hmm. pills too, and they're so important for skin. Um, so just one last thing is um what so if somebody doesn't want to use hormonal birth control, what do you suggest? For birth yeah, so <clears throat> you know, one thing I, I really want to say as we go into this piece is that hormonal birth control never was preventing sexually transmitted infections. And I say that because I'll start you know, talking about barrier methods and using a condom. And sometimes people are like, nobody wants to use condoms. I'm like, and nobody wants to get chlamydia or anything else like that either. But like, and that's something that I can't, uh, so many of my patients have been like, I've been talking and like, there's just so much, like, uh, not even misinformation, just like a void of information not provided to women where I'll talk to them about like, oh, you have a new partner, you're wearing condoms. And they're like, well, I'm on birth control. I'm like, hold up, what? Like what happened in that conversation? And I feel like, I mean, this is definitely younger women that I'm talking to that I'm like, okay, we like, okay, that's not how that works. So, you know, there is always barrier methods. So there are condoms, diaphragms that you can use. There's cervical cap. Um, and then there's the copper IUD if you don't want to use hormonal birth control. 
I detail all of these, chapter 13 of Beyond the Pill. Um, there's an entire chapter to non-hormonal contraceptives. Copper UD works for some women, not for all women. I always recommend, you know, chart your symptoms when you start a new form of hormonal or non-hormonal birth control. Continue to chart your symptoms to understand if it's working for you. If you have heavy, painful periods, skip the copper AOD. It's not going to work. It's going to just make everything worse. Trust me. <laughs> Too many times I've seen that. Um, and then there's also fertility awareness method. And fertility awareness method these days is a whole lot easier because there's all kinds of femtech devices like um, DAISY and Natural Cycles are two that the United States has. The FDA actually approved Natural Cycles as a contraceptive device um, in 2018, which was huge. But just like I said before, don't take a backseat to your health. So even if you're using one of these Femtech devices or you're doing basal body temperature and you're recording that, so ah, fertility awareness method. How would I tell people what that is? So it's uh, the, the most, uh, you know, the, the, one, the form, so you may have heard rhythm method um, before, but the form of natural family planning or fertility awareness method um, that actually has the highest efficacy is when you're taking your basal body temperature and you're paying attention to your symptoms. And so first thing in the morning, eyes pop open, take your basal body temperature with a thermometer under the tongue, you can use one of the Femtech devices, you can plug it into an app, or you can hand paper chart it. Get a book like Taking Charge of Your Fertility, that'll help you um, be able to do that. And what you'll notice is there's a spike right before you ovulate. So there's gonna be a spike, oh, egg is coming. So that's what we're looking for in that change. You'll also see fertile cervical mucus. Um, and so you'll see fertile cervical mucus. You can try to assess your cervix. That's a little bit trickier for women. But the other thing is, is that you'll notice your libido is suddenly up. You're like, oh, I'm very interested. I'm very interested in having sex. Odds are that you're going to ovulate soon. So there's lots of, and there's more symptoms than that that you can pay attention to, to really dial in when you're fertile. Now, when you're um, going through perimenopause, cycles are not regular. So that's not going to be as accurate. Um, there are other forms out there where you can actually um, take the pH of your vagina and your mouth and be able to understand if you're going to ovulate. Those work a little bit better for women with irregular cycles. And then there's new gels coming on the market, one that um, changes your cervical mucus. So it's when it's supposed to be fertile cervical mucus, it's less fertile. And then there's other um, gels that will actually kill sperm. And so there's lots of other options out there. It's just about what works for you, what works for you in your lifestyle. Like I said, you know, if you're someone, you're not in a monogamous relationship getting tested, then um, you're going to want to use condoms anyways. So that's something that's going to be part of your routine as it is. And so you've got to really evaluate those things like in the context of your health, your family history what symptoms you've had with different contraceptives. And then when you, when you start that contraceptive, you've got to figure out if that's right for you or not. And it can sometimes be trial and error for some women. I mean, some women are like, I tr I've had women write me, they're like, I've tried 10 pills, every single one, I am a wreck. Hormonal birth control doesn't work for me. Um, and you know, for other women, they're like, oh, I tried this pill, but then I switched to like a, you know, the Skyla IUD and that seemed to work for me. So just know that like there is no one size fits all. And while like, yes, naturally we would never be on these synthetic hormones, there's also the reality that like we have things to do in this world. And so, and getting pregnant may not be on your agenda at this moment. And it's absolutely 100% your right to choose when it's time to make a baby. Right. Absolutely. Awesome. Well, Julia, I mean, we could just keep talking and going on. <laughs> There's so much to cover when it, when it comes to birth control and hormones and, um, and optimal health and fertility and all that good stuff. Uh, but I know um, people can find a lot of information in your book. We've already covered a lot. So that's probably enough for everybody to digest today. Um, so tell everybody where they can find you, find out more about you and, and your new book. Yeah. So you can find me at drbrighton.com. Um, my book is there. My book is also everywhere that they sell books. Um, I get to be that tagline and say that. <laughs> so you can find my book anywhere they sell books. Um, you can also find me at Instagram at Dr. Jolene Brighton. I also have a YouTube channel where I educate women via video. So whatever format works for you. And then of course, if you're grabbing the book, grab the bonuses. We have a lot of really cool bonuses for you. And that's at beyondthepillbook.com.
Great. And we'll have all those links up on the website below your interview. All right. Thank you, awesome. Jolene. It was great to see you. Thank you. So good seeing you. I hope you enjoyed this interview today with Dr. Jolene Brighton. I'd really love to hear from you. Have you had any of these kinds of issues that Dr. Brighton talked about during the interview? If so, please send us an email at The Spot Doctor or post a comment in the section below on YouTube or on The Spot Doctor website below the podcast and let us know. Give us your feedback as to whether or not this is an issue for you. Also, please think of other people you could forward this along to, other women in your and women in your life that, that you think might benefit from this interview. Please share with with other people. And if you haven't already taken the skin quiz, I encourage you to do that. Just go to theskinquiz.com. It takes just a few moments and you get personal, personalized recommendations for you and give you information about what your skin's trying to tell you about your health. Go to theskinquiz.com. Also, I invite you to join me on social media. The Spot Doctor is on Facebook, on Pinterest, Instagram, YouTube, and join us there for the conversation on social media. And I'll see you next time on the Spot Doctor podcast. Thank you.